This I'm glad it And we are the authors of the book you're about to read or hear from, Kinetic the First Alliance. It is a uh, the first book in a trilogy, possibly saga. It is a science fiction book that takes place on Earth. It involves teenagers who develop superpowers to defend our planet from an evil alien race that is coming to enslave and mine our resources. So more importantly, we try to capture what it feels like to be like ripped away from your family and friends to uh, to, to defend the Earth, you know, from a fight they had nothing to do with. Yeah. So we try to uh, we try to capture that more than anything. But there is a lot of action. There's a lot, there's romance. There's everything. In it. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with reading the first chapter. Yes. And if there's enough time, we're going to shoot over to another chapter and uh, just give you a little bit of uh, you know, some variety. Right. So, uh, the first chapter, it is going to introduce our main character. His name is Alexander Carter. He is a young teenager from Houston, Texas. Um, I'm going to be reading the parts of the narrator and Alex. And uh, Laz is going to be taking the other parts, just to kind of break it up so it's a little bit different. And you guys have been to book readings before and where it's just one person, so we want, want to make it more fun. So, we have a couple people. Okay, here we go. Chapter 1, Farewell Days of My Youth. There's rarely ever a time in a person's life that they're ready when called upon. Usually it happens at the most inconceivable moment. But when thrown into an intergalactic war of worlds, what choice do you really have? Right and wrong, good and evil, heart and mind, it would be so much easier just to run away from these conflicts. Alex, however, was about to learn that courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. Um, uh, but even more important is the knowing that real heroes are just people who fear running away from conflict more than they fear death itself. However, the irony of life is that without struggle, you'll never know what you're truly capable of. Something Alex was going to find out the hard way. Mankind may never understand how thin the line between good and evil really is. Who decides who is right and who is wrong? Usually it's decided by the victor. But this time around, we're supposed to entrust the survival of humanity to the hands of a teenager who's only sure that he's impossibly unsure. What kind of messed up joke is that? The smart thing to do would have been for him to forget that night and live the rest of his short life as a normal, boring adolescent. Then again, no one, no one said that being a hero would be easy, or at least it definitely wasn't smart. <clears throat> Despite his best efforts, Alex couldn't shake the pounding headache, usually sitting on his favorite couch watching old game shows with his grandfather, put him at ease. But it didn't offer any letter from the pain that night. Alex had always been cautious about taking pills of any kind, but the pain was steadily increasing. The flashing lights from the screen felt unbearable. It was intense, and all the applauding was like a power tool drilling through his mind. He glanced at the tempting bottle of aspirin on the small TV dinner table to his left, but decided against it. It was getting late anyway. So he decided to go to bed and sleep it off, hoping that he would feel better in the morning. Grandpa, I got a killer headache, so I'm fist to go to bed, okay? Want me to call a doctor? As usual, his grandfather was overly cautious at the slightest sign of trouble. What? No, I'm fine, Alex responded. Of course you are. He smiled slightly. Alex's grandfather instinctively looked at the framed picture of Alex's late father above the mantel and told Alex for the hundredth time how much he resembled his father in both appearance and demeanor. Alex saw that it was a bit eerie, almost as looking in looking at the future itself in the frame. With his fair skin, blue eyes, bright enough to pierce someone's very soul, yet hair so jet black that the light would never be able to escape its void. Alex was undeniably his father's son. They even smiled the same way. Just like your old man, trying to tough it out, he said. But before Alex could even open his mouth to comment, his grandfather looked up with tired eyes and smiled. Sir, Alex replied. Nothing. Good night, son. Alex gave a sliver of a smile back. Good night, Grandpa. Alex nervously paced to his bathroom, hoping not to fall over from being so nauseous. He leaned over his sink, wanting to wash the day away. He cupped his hands under the faucet and splashed the lukewarm water across his face. It offered only a split second of relief before his headache began thrashing around in his skull again. He took a look in the bathroom mirror and stared at his reflection. His grandfather's remark once again forced him to think of his parents, who had died when he was just an infant. Since then, he had been raised by his grandfather a decorated retired police sergeant with more than 30 years of experience on the force. Alex had so much anger inside of him and no one to direct it at. He was proud of his parents but angry at them for not being there. With no one to blame, he once again buried his resentment deep inside and dragged his feet down the hall toward his room. He reached for the door handle with apprehension. Maybe tonight will be different, he thought to himself. He slowly turned the handle and went in with his room without incident, thankful that at least one thing went his way that day. Upon entering his room, he took off his shirt, revealing his toned body, a body that he'd acquired from years and years of running track in middle school and high school. 
Behind him, in the sport, everything from ribbons to two foot tall trophies was on display. Alex traced the frame of his bed with his hand before lying down. He wasn't sure if he could climb in without missing the mattress from being too disoriented. He crawled into bed with his laptop in hand. It had become a routine for him to plug in his headphones and fall asleep to the songs in his music library. He reached over to the plug to plug in his charger, but instead watched as it sparked and shorted out upon contact with the outlet. Son of a, he thought to himself, and prayed the battery would be last long enough for him to fall asleep. He tried his best to settle in bed and scrolled through his thousands of songs that he had illegally downloaded. Alex was confident that the worst was over, but he hadn't gotten past the H section of his playlist before two drops of blood splattered on his keyboard. Puzzled, he wiped his nose and stared at the streak of blood running from the end of his wrist to the tip of his finger. Seriously, it's official. I'm cursed, he said to himself. Alex gripped his head in agony. For some reason, his headache was getting much worse. Alex finally gave in and turned his nightstand to get aspirin. He popped the pill, but not even a minute after swallowing, he saw the silhouette of a figure behind the adjacent window curtain. Alex was startled out of bed. He took a couple steps back and again grabbed his head wanting to literally rip the throbbing torment from his scalp. He squinted his eyes and looked up, but he couldn't make out who the figure was behind the slightly transparent curtain. Who the hell is there? Get out of my room, Alex demanded. As he frantically looked around for a weapon, he picked up his aluminum baseball bat and pointed at the figure. Drop your bludgeon immediately. I am not here to harm you. I came here to help you, human. The mysterious voice said, Screw you, I'm not dropping a thing, he nervously responded. Screw me, you say? The figure took a step backward. Look, I'm not afraid to use this, Alex said. He tightened up the grip around his baseball handle and inched over to the wall. He was close enough to the light switch to flick it on. The figure stepped out into the light and revealed itself. Alex couldn't believe his eyes. The thing in front of him stood up straight with perfect posture and had amber-colored skin with black tribal markings that circulated and flowed in steady motion throughout the surface of its body and face. It had sleek battle-scarred armor covered in most of its body and perfectly placed cryptic metals that signified to Alex that this creature had seen many battles uh, that were attached to its sleeve. It proudly walked over to closer to Alex and sternly said, You would raise, you would dare raise a hand in me? I could leave your planet to die right now. But the word